Hi everyone. Hope your week went well. Uh, the Eid holidays are approaching really fast. Now I had promised you guys that uh, I'll be showing you some of uh, the loot that I got uh, of some of the old comics from Marvel and DC. So today what I'm going to be showing you is uh, the Marvel stack that I got and uh, hopefully next time when I am live uh, I'll be showing you my DC stack. But uh, it's not going to be just about showing off my latest uh, purchases of comics. It's also going to be a bit about uh, what has been announced recently on San Diego Comic Con uh, concerning the upcoming projects for Marvel Cinematic Universe, including Disney li uh, streaming service. Uh, I think its name is Disney Plus. So let me just start out with uh, some of the comics that I got. Now, this here is uh, Marvel 2 in 1. This used to be uh, this uh, something similar to Marvel Team Up. Uh, except the fact that in this one, what you used to have was you would have a different lineup of heroes teaming up together. Whereas in Marvel Team Up, you would find uh, Spider-Man and uh, mostly Spider-Man as the mainstay character. And uh, sometimes you would find a Human Torch as well. But Spider-Man was the mainstay character in all those. Uh, so this issue is basically uh, number 88 and uh, it's from June 1982. Back in the days, what used to happen was that comics they were fun to read even on their own this is like almost uh, a one shot story but the thing is that uh, i grew up in the 80s and for me jim shooter era comics have have had a lasting impact on me and every time uh, i come across a comic that was published in the 80s uh, it really you know captures you in a different way altogether new comic books are good new writers are good but new comics these days whether it's marvel or dc it's all about a huge event every three months uh, or people just trying to kill someone and resurrect the other back in the day this is what it used to be like you would be having stories either one shots either two parters three parters 13 parts whichever might be the case but there was a solid rationale behind each and every story sometimes uh, the stories would involve superheroes in more relatable situations to our ordinary lives and that's the thing that i really love about uh, the older comics and this trend continued uh, till the 90s throughout uh, things started to change a lot of things a lot of good things happened but uh, in the early 2000s and then uh, when these independent comic book writers uh, came on board mainstream companies but like every era it has its highs and lows and this is one of the things anyhow this is one uh marvel 2 and 1 starring the thing and savage she hulk number 88 uh now i never had imagined that this comic i would ever get my hands on it's the incredible hulk comic book its cover was uh drawn by al milgram uh, Al uh, is known to be as an editor, he has written some comics, but his art is something that I really found impressive. Even though uh, this cover that I'm going to show you has a bit of a flaw uh, when it comes to scaling, uh, the, you know, maintaining the actual physical appearances uh, or the physical attributes of each character with respect to one another. But still, this one incredible hulk and you can see vendigo and you can see sasquatch from alpha flight uh 
what more can I say? It's written by uh, Bill Mantlo, the guy who co- co-created Rocket Raccoon. Bill Mantlo, uh, his run on The Incredible Hulk in the 80s is one of the best ever. One of my favorites. Uh, and he was teamed up with uh, Sal Basama, our pal Sal. And uh, though in this comic book, the artwork is good, but not the best of what Sal uh, was always able to do. But the story, again, it's really, really good. So this here, and this is a quite a memorable cover. And one of my all-time favorites. And I'm really glad that I got hold of this. Now... What I'm going to show you, it has, it's a, it's an issue of one of my most favorite characters. But there is an element of history of comics in Jadda, pasted onto it. This here is Daredevil, okay, in which Bullseye makes a comeback. But what makes it even more special for me is this price tag that remains there Al Khazindar Al Khazindar company was the distributor for comics uh, I don't know if they're still as active as they used to be because last I saw uh, some of the issues uh, in Virgin Mega Stores, and I wasn't able to find uh, Al Khazindar uh, price tag onto them and uh, this is Daredevil number 290 and if I this comic is exact year is 1991 this was the time when comics used to cost 8 to 10 reals unlike today where the comic is gonna cost you like 25 to 30 reals and this is a very special issue because Bullseye, after his uh, disappearance, makes a comeback. And the animosity between him and Daredevil. And obviously, if these two are there, we cannot think that Kingpin would be out on vacation. So this issue is a very special one that I got as well. Here's another Daredevil issue. And this is part of uh, the Inferno storyline, X-Men Inferno crossover. This is from 1989. And again, it has Al Khazindar company's price tag onto it. Yeah, this one's even cheaper, six reals. Man, I miss the good old days. I really, really miss the good old days. The art, the stories. Just unbelievable. And here's another one. Daredevil co-starring Spider-Man. And they are up against Blackheart. Who is Blackheart? Blackheart is the son of Mephisto. The demon who looks like Satan from the Dark Dimension. And uh, this is like a team up kind of an issue. The art by John Romita Jr. Another comic, this one's uh, about a character, a short-lived character from the Avengers. His name was Quasar, the Cosmic Avenger. The comic is not in a good condition. So here he is going up against uh, Phoenix, 
but I think this Phoenix is not actually Jean Grey, it's uh, Rachel Summers. Marvel Tales starring Spider-Man and Ghost Rider. These used to be my favorite because these were reprints of old Spider-Man stories from the 70s, 60s. And uh, you could relive the good old days. Now, I've got three issues and two of them represent a great era of the Avengers comic books. These issues were written by Roger Stern and the art was done by John Bushima whose uh, young, uh, other brother, I think Sal is younger or John is younger, I, I, I don't remember that one but Sal Bushima is the one who uh, teamed up with Bill Mantlo for The Incredible Hulk and is known to be one of the best artists for The Incredible Hulk since uh, Jack Kirby, Herb Tremp and these are the this is the first one written by Roger Stern art by John Buscema you can see Bl Black Knight you can see Yellow Jacket you can see Paladin, you can see Wasp, and Grey Gargoyle. A very good story, but the next one is even better. In this one, because in this time period during the 80s, Namer became an Avenger briefly, and his uh, th throne of Atlantis, he had left this, his throne of Atlantis only to find it being overrun by Atuma, his arch foe, and in this issue, this is just like a one-shot story. The Avengers, they go out with uh, Neymar to help him defeat Atuma. So much action, so much story, so much. You know, it's not just like senseless violence or something like that. I mean, the stories carry depth within them. And then there's another Avengers issue, which is from the 90s. The importance of this issue is that it tells us the journey of a legendary comic book artist whose name is Andy Kubert. Now, for those who are not aware of uh, the name Kubert, Kubert name became popular thanks to a guy a comic book artist back in the 50s and 60s and he continued drawing till the 90s joe kubert joe kubert's work was mostly for dc comics for uh, uh, titles like hawkman gi combat and uh, joe had two ha has two sons He's survived by two sons. One is Adam Kubert, the legendary artist for Wolverine. And currently he's uh, drawing Captain America. Uh, he has done a lot of work for Avengers. Uh, so Adam is the elder brother. Now Andy is the younger brother. And Andy started out his career with Marvel. And he drew the Avengers initially. Later on when Jim Lee had uh, left Marvel to start independent uh, image comics uh, he was replaced uh, uh, by Andy Kubert and you can see that the 1991 X-Men uh, uh, title which was started with Chris Claremont and Jim Lee because they were uh, delivering one success after another for the uncanny X-Men titles in the uh, la late 80s uh, and Chris Claremont he was he he was delivering like since the late 70s with uh, one awesome storyline after another uh, so Andy Kubert started out with the Avengers and this comic the story is written by Bob Harris 
Now, Bob Harris, his uh, uh, he would become the editor in chief after Tom DeFalco, and he is the guy who uh, made the '90s solely about mutants and, and X Men. Uh, the work that was done under his leadership, I still read it today and I love it. Things like Fatal Attractions, Executioner's Song, um, all of these uh, came under his uh, leadership, or most of them, if not all of them. Uh, but again, like every person, he has uh, highs and lows. Uh, they have something good about them, they have something bad about them. The reason why a legendary writer like Chris Claremont left Marvel in the early 90s was because of Bob Harris. And in that respect, uh, it was a huge blow to the X-Men because as much as I am a fan of Scott Lobdell, uh, the creative force who succeeded Chris Claremont and uh, took over the X-Men titles, uh, namely uh, the, the Uncanny X-Men, X-Men and uh, X-Force, Excalibur, X-Factor. He was good, but, or should I say excellent, but Claremont is like way on top uh, when it comes to X-Men storylines. And in that respect, what happens is that uh, quite a lot of opportunities were missed. Quite a lot of uh, titles were shelved like i'll give you an example that when jim lee had left there were some plans to have a graphic novel which would star punisher with nick fury and it would be one of the best storylines ever it would be it would be in continuation of uh, uh, the von strucker uh, the von strucker uh, files or the von strucker uh, von strucker episode something that starred captain america daredevil and the punisher because uh, for those of you who are not aware jim lee also drew punisher back in the late 80s and early 90s so this issue reminds a lot uh, about what were the 90s all about and by the way the story in itself is really good because this villain, Thane Actor, Thane Actor, is not some kind of a major villain that you're looking at for the Avengers. But the quality of uh, the good old days was that, you know, you, you were desperate to buy next month's comic. Yes, I accept the fact that the internet wasn't there, entertainment was not what it used to be, the availability thereof and all that. But still comics you know you would be looking forward to the next month or the next week just to get your hands on the next story that's going to be there and this is like uh, all my stuff which i recently acquired for marvel so next time when i'm going to be doing a live transmission i'm going to be showing you what i got in uh, in my dc comic stack i've been reading it we're reading these books and uh, you know the experience is just overwhelming moving on to the next topic that i really f am itching to talk about is the announcement that was made uh, in san diego comic con this year uh, about upcoming projects for disney vis-a-vis -vis the marvel cinematic universe as well as for the disney plus streaming service for me, the biggest uh, uh, excitement rests with Doctor Strange, uh, the madness of multiverse or the multiverse madness, and then you have uh, Shang-Chi. Now, Shang-Chi, uh, it's something quite uh, nostalgic for me. Nostalgic in the sense that the era in which I grew up, because I'm a Jiddawi by the end of the day, and in the 80s, I grew up watching Saudi Channel 2. And on Saudi Channel 2, I used to watch a TV series 
Uh, it was an old TV series from the 70s, but we used to watch the reruns of it, Kung Fu. And the martial art of Kung Fu always, I mean, it just just appealed to me. I mean, you have ninjutsu, you have karate, but I'm not a big fan of Karate Kid. Forgive me for saying that, but I'm not a big fan of Karate Kid. So, I'm more of a Kung Fu guy. And uh, growing up in Jeddah, being uh, used to watching Hong Kong Fui uh, cartoon and then the Kung Fu series and all that, I was one of those who was really excited when Iron Fist was announced. And while Iron Fist did not receive uh, the kind of reviews that Daredevil was able to secure or Punisher or Luke Cage, um, Jessica Jones, I really enjoyed watching it because it's Kung Fu. And uh, Danny Rand, Iron Fist, has always been one of my favorite characters just because of that, just because of his association with uh, this martial art. But when I was... Um, re my favorite pastime happens to be to read as much as possible not just the comic books but also the history behind those great works and in that I came across a character called Shang-Chi and Shang-Chi was a character that really you know mesmerized me I was under the impression that Iron Fist maybe was the first Kung Fu character uh, a byproduct of the 70s uh, because the 70s in the US and in the world were about two or three things disco music black exploitation and uh, kung fu uh, the famous song everybody wants kung fu fighting so you know it's like that was the era and i was under the impression that maybe iron fist was the fun uh, first uh, kung fu uh, superhero but turns out that the first ever kung fu superhero was Shang-Chi, whether it's Marvel, whether it's DC, because DC later introduced a character called Richard Dragon. Uh, Richard Dragon, who started out with his own titles, but wasn't able to garner much popularity. Richard Dragon ended up uh, being part of the DC universe, but someone who was responsible for training characters like the Huntress, uh, Nightwing, for their martial arts uh, in DC Universe. So Shang-Chi is somebody because, yes, I like, I love Danny Rand, uh, the character, the story behind uh, Iron Fist, the concept of Iron Fist in itself. But Shang-Chi is like more authentic because he reminds me of Bruce Lee. Uh, and in that respect, you know, it's like, you know, we, uh, I, uh, People who are Bruce Lee fans, people people like my dad, people like my uncles, they, they, they had to witness a disappointment in their lives that uh, uh, here you have one super hit movie after another for Bruce Lee and one fine day we learned that Bruce Lee is dead. But for for somebody like me who, because of my family, was able to come across uh martial art movies and the ca a celebrity like bruce lee a legend not a celebrity a legend like bruce lee i found something similar to him in shang chi and in that respect the plot that surrounded him and by the way shang chi comic was one of the most successful comics the only problem was that its readership was pretty much restricted to a particular ethnicity and it didn't garner the mass appeal the way it has now. And I am pretty much hopeful that uh, this is not just an announcement for the Shang-Chi movie, but as I watched uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, I am seeing things right now, and a lot of it is being discussed on uh, various comic book sites, like for example, that what's gonna happen because, uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, so you better stop watching my live transmission around now. But for those of you who have watched it, uh, now there are a lot of uh, openings that are gonna follow 
ever since we learned that uh, Spider-Man's secret identity has been revealed by Mysterio in Far From Home. And that's going to create legal issues as well. So when you have legal issues, uh, which Marvel character comes to your mind? Matt Murdock, right? Daredevil. And sometimes, somehow I think that this mutually agreed divorce between Marvel uh, Studios and or Marvel Entertainment and Netflix, it happened with mutual agreement, basically. Uh, it's just my hunch, maybe I might be wrong. And uh, in that respect, uh, I think that now they, they Marvel wanted to test the market to see what kind of response these street level superheroes uh, would receive and they have received a really positive response uh, now I think that these characters will end up being as a supporting cast to main uh, to main MCU characters so for example if it's gonna be Shang-Chi I cannot think that Co Colleen Wing and Danny Rand Iron Fist are not gonna be part of that project maybe they might even have Luke Cage or Misty Knight along with him as well uh, similarly uh, now are they gonna be played by the same actors that I can't say similarly if Spider-Man movie moves into the direction that I'm thinking whereby Spider-Man is looking to hire a lawyer and next thing you know we might see Matt Murdock helping him out so there you have it and then we don't know if the Punisher is gonna get involved in that respect because let's not forget the first 10 years of Marvel Cinematic Universe because of the legal complications, because of Marvel selling their rights of their own characters to Fox and Sony, Spider-Man did not become the flagship character. The flagship character for the first 10 years of Marvel Cinematic Universe. But now since all of these legalities have been resolved, uh, 21st Century Fox has been bought by Disney, Sony has given rights back to Marvel for uh, for Spider-Man. You know, it's like now the next 10 years are going to be led by Spider-Man and we're going to be seeing more and more street level superheroes. Uh, plus at the same time, if uh, we look at Doctor Strange, uh, strange upcoming movie that's even telling us uh, a, quite a bit of uh, Marvel dark dimension slash mysticism slash horror stories can that make way for uh, other characters because Blade is has also been announced and if Blade is there, and if Doctor Strange is there, then we're talking about the Midnight Suns. Because Sony is actually going to be uh, releasing Morbius, the Living Vampire, who is, again, a Midnight Sun. Uh, please check Midnight Suns, read about it. It's on Wikipedia, it's on Marvel Wikia. But my only thing is that, uh, you know... When I see young readers, the main thing I really want to do, uh, do, do want to say to them is I want to encourage them to read as much classic material as as they can, because the experience that you're gonna get, the kind of stories that you're gonna come across, you will find that yes, the cinematic universe is quite exciting. They have delivered some really good uh, productions. But nothing can replace the comic. Not, nothing can replace the comic. The art, the comic book art, the comic book storyline, uh, the arcs, the crossovers, and especially f from the time of, uh, when you're talking about from the 60s all the way to the early 2000s to 2010, it was like mind-blowing. It was amazing. So I hope you liked uh, this transmission. And uh, I'll be uh, checking back uh, sometime later in the month. I hope you guys have a great Eid and make the most of your Eid holidays. Order some comics if you can, read them or download them and read them on your phone or your tablet, whichever might be the case. But 
प्लीज डू डोंट जस्ट रिलाई ऑन द सिनेमेटिक यूनिवर्स और द टी वी सीरीज इट सेल्फ ये दे आर गुड इन देयर ओन राइट बट द मेन थिंग्स आर द कॉमिक्स द रियल डील आर द कॉमिक्स थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर वॉचिंग हैव अ गुड नाइट बाय